First off, I would like to thank Lindsay for sending me this awesome wine glass, which I will put on display rather than use because I don't want it to get damaged because it's just so beautiful. Um, thank you so much. Um, it's just wonderful that you would think to do this and send it to me, so thank you very much. And now, on to the Young Turks. <laughs> Actor John Boyega wanted to post something nice about women on International Women's Day. Nothing wrong with that. Good on him. But not everybody liked that. Well, you know, you can't please everyone, can you? In fact, uh, he got some criticism for it, and I'll tell you what that criticism is in just a second. But the post in question on Instagram said the following. When women support each other, incredible things happen. Yes. Not all of them are necessarily good, but yes, when women get together and cooperate, incredible things do indeed happen. Probably the most benign thing anyone could possibly say on International Women's Day, but it turns out that some people were not happy about it. Or maybe there are some people out there who are getting sick and tired of hearing about how wonderful women are and how much we owe to them, particularly in the absence of any similar message about men. Keep in mind, Anna, it's not just adults being exposed to this disparity in cultural messaging. The sycophantic praising of women and girls and the moral condemnation of men and boys. What do you think young boys feel when 90% of what he hears about women are these empowering messages about how great women are, while he's subjected to million-dollar book and merchandise franchises like Boys Are Stupid Throw Rocks at Them? There's a researcher in Canada named Paul Nathanson. He got interested in how society views men and women when a sociologist friend of his told him about a content analysis he'd done of TV commercials. They'd examined all kinds of commercials where men and women were pitted against each other, where one was presented as smarter or more competent or nicer or friendlier or more responsible than the other, and found that without exception, in every single ad, the woman came out on top. Nathanson said to himself, that makes no sense. Uh, nothing in sociology is ever a hundred percent. So he and his male partner, yes, he's gay, paid close attention any time they watched TV for 10 years. And in all that time, they found only two examples of commercials where the man got the better of the woman. He expanded his investigation to TV shows, movies, and other forms of media and found the exact same pattern. Now, as a woman, I'm getting kind of sick of it. It feels like pandering. It feels condescending. It feels like empty praise. Some of us don't need to hear about how great we are all the time just because we have vaginas. There's nothing about being a woman that makes you some kind of hero deserving of kudos. Anna, it seems especially shitty to lap all of this up, all this unearned and undeserved praise, when women are willing to tolerate a one-sided narrative at the expense of their own young son's self-esteem. Is my ego so fragile that I'm willing to have my son grow up in a world where only girls and women get praise and only women's and girls' contributions to society are lauded? Where women and girls are portrayed as superior to, the, you know, to my son just by virtue of gender? I suppose I might if I loved my sons less than I love my daughter, or if I was a fatuous cunt who has no ability to put herself in the shoes of a seven-year-old boy who gets to see boys are stupid throw rocks at them not only on the scarves and t-shirts of his female classmates, but on the shelves of his school library. You know, this whole thing reminds me of a stand-up bit I saw years ago, and I so wish I had saved it because I haven't been able to find it again. If anybody watching recognizes it from my description, please shoot me the link and I'll post it in the low bar. The comedian comes out on stage at the beginning of his act, and the very first thing he says is something like, I think women are inherently superior to men. Massive cheers from the women in the audience, tons of applause, and as the cheers and the applause start to die down, he tries to finish his thought. And the reason is, and, and the reason I say that, and the the reason I say this is because women really like to hear it. At which point, the applause and cheering explodes as the men in the audience join in. And 
as many of the women in the audience suddenly realized they'd just been burned like a volcano and took it with good humor. Tell me, Anna, do women really need this kind of constant, incessant validation? Do we need it to the exclusion of any validation of men, or worse, our young sons? What does it say about us if we do need that? So uh, BuzzFeed reports that while there were also plenty of messages praising him for his words and dubbing him Finn the Feminist after his Star Wars character, other commenters wrote things such as traitor. Yeah, that, that just has nothing to do with the fact that the character Finn, you know, was a traitor or anything. I mean, none of these traitor comments could be, you know, chalked up to ribbing or razzing or riffing off a meme or anything, you know. Nah. You're a man, and what about men? What about men? Let's see if you've given that any thought whatsoever, Anna. Now, I posted something of my own yesterday on mm -hmm. my Instagram account, Anna Kasparian TYT, if you want to follow me, not a big deal. Um, and Nice, shameless self-promotion. It's incredible because I didn't get a lot of hate, okay? But I did get a few comments from a few guys that are like, well, what about International Men's Day? Like, what is this? Like, they were upset about it. And it's like... It's like what, Anna? International Men's Day is pretty much every other day, right? Right. <laughs> no, International Men's Day is November 19th. It was initiated in 1992. According to Wikipedia, the objectives of celebrating an International Men's Day include focusing on men's and boys' health, improving gender relations, promoting gender equality, and highlighting male role models. It's an occasion to highlight discrimination against men and boys and to celebrate their achievements and contributions, in particular, their contributions to community, family, marriage, and childcare. The broader and ultimate aim of the event is to promote basic humanitarian values. That's International Men's Day. Of course, UK Labour backbencher Philip Davies attempted last November to promote a debate on men's issues in Parliament. Issues such as the rising suicide rate of men in the UK, which is now the leading cause of death for men aged 18 to 49 in that country. He was laughed at by fellow MP Jess Phillips, who claimed, as you do, that every day is a day to debate and discuss men's issues in Parliament. Now, I'm going to give you an assignment, Anna. I'm going to ask you to investigate and find out if, on any of the other 364 days a year, the British Parliament has debated men's health issues, the lack of availability of crisis services, and the resulting obscene rates of suicide among men in the UK. You know, since every other day is International Men's Day, right? Mr. Davies did eventually manage to get his debate approved, but only after a huge backlash from the public, which included some very harsh criticism of Jess Phillips for her laughing at male suicide rates and dismissing them as an issue that is not in need of addressing. I think her reasoning was that, oh, well, when Parliament is 50% women, then the government should consider men killing themselves at five times the rate of women. Yeah, then that'll be something to think about. Yeah. But sure, every other day than International Women's Day is... International Men's Day. It's a day when we sit around pouring praise on men, lauding their accomplishments as a sex rather than as individuals, and addressing their problems because, yeah, yeah, that's really the universe we live in. So it's not, it's not meant to tear men down. It's meant to prop women up. Really? Women need to be propped up? What does that say about us, Anna? Doesn't that imply that we can't compete on an even playing field? I mean, we already have more legal rights than men do. If we can't compete on those terms without the public constantly stroking our egos and nibbling our cunt lips, lavishing appreciation and encouragement on us for the smallest accomplishment, including having a vagina, then what the fuck does that say about us, Anna? You tell me. And when you think about it, not just in the context of the United States, but... <laughs> yeah, because if you take it in the context of the U.S. or any other Western country, you don't have a leg to stand on, do you? Internationally, women are treated as second-class citizens in a lot of other countries. 
but not the U.S. Thank you for admitting that, sort of. Though I would correct you. Women are not treated like second-class citizens in other parts of the world. They're treated as different citizens. They have different sets of rights and entitlements than men do. You know, like that 15-year-old boy who works in a shipbreaking yard in Bangladesh has the right to work and the right to make financial decisions for his widowed mother and sisters. And his mother and sisters have the right to be supported by his income without having to go out and work on their own. Are the mother and sisters second-class citizens because they have fewer opportun opportunities to earn income than he does? Or is he a second-class citizen because the laws and customs in his culture force him to take on whatever work he can find, however dangerous or strenuous, and use that income for the benefit of his mother and sisters as well as himself? Is he the slave owner because he demands they have a meal prepared for him when he gets back to the family shanty? and they are compelled by law and custom to comply? Or is he the slave because by the same laws and customs, he has to pay for their food and shelter out of his own wages? Second-class citizen? Which one? Maybe for religious reasons, maybe for other reasons. <laughs> other reasons being like, you know, that our Bangladeshi boy's sisters probably don't want to work in that ship-breaking yard that killed their father and will likely eventually kill their brother. You know, those kind of reasons, Anna? but it's something that should be discussed. Yes, it is. And both sides of the issue need to be discussed, not just the side of the mother and sisters who must defer to a 15-year-old boy as head of the household, but the side of the boy who is forced by law and custom into that role and who is burdened with responsibilities commensurate with his privileges. You know, the side feminism can't or won't talk about when they talk about women in history or in other countries. Now, his response to the haters was the best thing on the internet yesterday, if you ask me. And here's what his response was. I can't wait. To praise the loyalty between women does not mean disregarding the loyalty between men. I have a lot to say about this alleged loyalty between men, but I think that's going to have to wait for another video. For now, I'll refer you to research suggesting that while women possess a strong in-group preference based on gender, men possess an out-group gender preference. Both men and women have stronger feelings of positive affiliation toward women, at least in the abstract sense, than toward men. So, I'm just not talking about freaking men today. Please direct me to anywhere where Boyega has talked positively about men as a gender. Not, not as individuals, but as a gender. I mean, I'm open to the possibility that he has, but I doubt it. It's just not that common. It's not something men tend to do. So butthurt sexist, please remain in the shadows of your stupidity, and from within those shadows, you are free to have failed dreams about an estrogen-free world. That's not just a straw man, that's a straw monster. Estrogen-free world? Seriously? And this colossal example of straw manning, missing the point, and reductio ad absurdum is the best thing on the internet? All right, Anna. So let's note a couple of things here. First, I feel relieved that uh, I can use the word butthurt. Okay. Uh, I wasn't sure about that, but uh, since he's getting praised for it, okay, we're, we're now free to do that. Um, that was, perhaps on to more important matters. Um, what is it with these guys who are always talking about the mo bond between men? Here's the thing, Cenk. The bond between men is a very unique thing. If you actually had some background, even informal, in anthropology, evolutionary psychology, social psychology, ethology, or human behavioral biology, you might know that. See, the bond between men, human men, as it exists in human societies, doesn't exist in any other species, including our closest primate relatives. The ability of human males who are not genetically related to each other to bond and cooperate toward the interests of the larger group is actually greater than the ability of chimpanzee or bonobo males who are genetically related to each other to do so. This capability that is unique to human men is responsible for pretty much everything you see around you and all the systems and infrastructures that underpin it. Have you ever actually investigated how many individuals, processes, and systems are involved in putting a pencil in your hand, Chenk? We're talking hundreds of processes relying on thousands of discoveries and innovations involving the labor of millions of individuals in dozens of institutions that all interact to put a pencil in your hand. 
Every one of those processes, discoveries, systems, and innovations are dependent on the ability of men to bond and cooperate with other men. Chimpanzees don't have pencils, Cenk. They don't have pencils for a reason. Part of the reason is that they value male-male affiliation the way you do, something to be dismissed out of hand or scoffed at as unnecessary. And wouldn't it be great if there were no women around? What a dumbass thing to say. Okay, if you say so, hey, that's cool, that's cool. Yeah. We're libs, we don't judge, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, far be it from someone like you to judge others. And then, like, the whole traitor thing. You mean where people were mostly razzing him because his character, Finn, was a traitor? You mean like that? Like, what, yeah. if, if you are nice to women, you're a traitor to men? Everyone's nice to women, Shank. Might be nice if that niceness was spread around a bit, though. Instead, we get boys are stupid, throw rocks at them, and Father's Day cards that portray dads as deadbeats and mothers as heroes. I, that's so sad. That's so sad. It's sad that some people are upset about unequal treatment. Right. And, and it's not like he said anything about men. Again, I highly doubt he's ever said anything about men, about men's problems, issues, accomplishments, or virtues as men. Does he even know there's an International Men's Day just for that? I mean, you guys didn't seem to. In the first post. Yeah, it's not about he's... you. Yeah, it's never about men. Unless it's time to assign blame, right? Yeah, he didn't, he didn't say, I don't like men, the men should have less rights. But in the West, men do have fewer rights than women. Just saying. He didn't say anything about men. He just said, hey, bond between women, great, let's celebrate it. We do. Constantly. Ad nauseum. Without surcease. If celebrating women was a drinking game, everyone on Earth would be dead of alcohol poisoning. It's gross, Chank. It's too much. It doesn't do my daughter any good to hear for the 50 billionth time how she's great because she has a vagina. How bloated an ego do I want her to have? She's a wonderful young woman, but not because she has cunt flaps between her legs. It's because she's kind and talented and competent and compassionate, just as my sons are despite what they have between their legs. And yet the message from the mainstream toward my sons is that they're responsible by virtue of how they were born for a system that oppresses their sister, even though she has more rights than they do, and even though she is constantly validated by that system just because she has a vagina. She gets a gold star just for showing up, and they get to stand in the corner even if they've done nothing wrong. Because reasons. Like, ah, oh, you traitor! Okay. Again, the character Finn was a traitor. Did you guys not watch the movie? <laughs> Bring it down, dude. Bring it down. Look, I think more than anything, what, you know, the critics demonstrate is that they're so laughably insecure. Compared to the segment of the population that gets constant praise and mainlines it like fucking heroin? Like, yeah. th that insecurity doesn't make you seem masculine or powerful. It makes you seem like a boy. Or a woman, just saying. Right? An oh, insecure boy. boy. Or just a normal woman, just saying. Like Marco Rubio. Like Marco Rubio. <laughs> <laughs> And so I've never, I don't think I've ever been in a situation where people talked about uh, celebrating women and I was like, well, what about me? Well, that's because none of the people complaining were saying, what about me? They were saying, what about the 50% of the population whose issues aren't being addressed and who get routinely bashed rather than commended or praised? We all know your personal ego is plenty big enough, Chank. <laughs> like... It never occurs to me, right? Yeah. I'm guessing lots of things have never occurred to you, Cenk. Dude, we'll celebrate you on another day. Yeah, November 19th. Looking forward to it. Hopefully your coverage won't be a male privilege checking special where all you can talk about is how men harm other people. And, and you've got to, for God's sake, understand the difference between uh, people who have historically not had power and people who have. What kind of power are we talking about here, Chank? Because that's actually important. 
Now you might want to make an argument about, you know, hey, the divorce uh, laws in this country are not right now. Okay, fine. So glad you approve. Perfectly legitimate argument, argument I've probably made. Okay, mm -hmm. but historically, are you saying that? And I, some of them are crazy enough to say women have always had more power than men. Citation needed. Please provide me with a statement by someone who is taken seriously by men's activists to the effect that women have had more power than men through history. <laughs> yeah, so like the, 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 the reason ability you... to vote and be part of the political process. And yeah, we've had the same rights. I mean, we had more rights than men all this time. Citation needed. Please provide me with a statement by someone who is taken seriously by men's activists to the effect that women got the vote the same afternoon men did. Also, please explain what makes the right to vote more important than other rights and the power of franchise more effective than other forms of power. Why don't you see if you can fit in a quote by Mary Harris Jones just for color? I think with the woman who was on our show. You all know exactly who I am. Say my name. Karen, Karen. That's right. Now, say my name. Oh, I is. know. Don't even bring her up. I don't want to. <laughs> okay, like. Say my name. Karen, Karen, yada, yada, yada. Karen, Karen, yada, yada, yada. Oh, no, no. Like, you could have the right to vote at any time. You just didn't want it or something. Yeah, or something. It's that whole or something thing that you don't want to look at, Cenk. I don't know what their insane argument is. Of course you don't know what our insane argument is because instead of trying to understand that argument, here's what you did. Karen, Karen, yada, yada, yada. 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 And go make me a ham sandwich. Anyway, so that's why you do International Women's Day to say, hey, it's great, we're making progress. Now uh, we've got more equality, let's celebrate that. You don't need International Men's Day because men have been in charge for a long, long time. You're right, Cenk. Men have been in charge. Men like you. Men who could give three-eighths of a popcorn fart about the 90% of the unsheltered homeless who are male, 60% of whom are disabled by brain injuries detectable through fMRI scans. You know, men who wave away the growing suicide rates of young and middle-aged men as being not your problem or anyone's. Men who could give half a fuck about veterans suffering PTSD coming home to divorce papers and foreclosure notices and being stripped of their parental rights in family court. Men who claim that no man in the 1800s would have given women the vote, but you, Chank, you're the one good man who would have done it, aren't you? Men who claim every day is International Men's Day because, hey, you're a man and you're doing fine and who cares about the ones who aren't, right? Men who behave like chimpanzees instead of appreciating the unique and fragile ability of human males to form affiliations among each other, to care about each other, and to cooperate with each other. The unique ability of our males, human males, to work side by side, to create and maintain civilizations our primate cousins could never imagine. You're a chimpanzee, Chank. I have no idea what Anna is, other than dumb as a stump, if she thinks anything you claim I said resembles anything I actually said. That doesn't mean that uh, that women should get special rights or that etc. It just means that that was the power dynamic. Mm -hmm. And so, hey, great. It's we're getting more equal. That's a wonderful thing. Name me one right men have in the West that women don't chink or is that derailing? Right. But that's what bothers them. They don't want equality. 60% of university students in the U.S. are women, and cunt feminists like you and Anna seem to be just fine with that, don't you? And yet, it's men's activists who don't want equality. Please explain your reasoning. That's, exactly That's right. what gets under their skin. That women have the de, the de facto and de jure right to refuse to take on the obligations of parenthood just because they had sex and men don't? That women are the majority of post-secondary students while simultaneously qualifying for four times as many scholarships as men? That when two equally drunk people equally decide to have sex and both of them regret it, one is automatically considered a rapist and the other a victim based solely on their genitalia? You mean like when a man yells at a woman he can be arrested for domestic abuse while when a woman stabs a man the cops will tell him to get her into counseling and leave? Like when a man can be forced by law to pay for kids he never sees and the same system that will put him in jail for not paying won't do a single fucking damn thing? 
to force his ex to allow him the court-ordered access to his children that he is entitled to? You mean like that? That's what's getting under our skin? Is that what's getting under our skin, Shank? Or is it that we want to live in an estrogen-free world because of misogyny? I think I think it's not just that. I think that they're so insecure that I'm gonna I'm just gonna come out and say it. She's right? gonna say it. Oh, Anna, I can't wait. I feel like some some guys don't want the competition. Competition from women? Are you kidding me? I will repeat: women are sixty percent of university students in the U.S. and simultaneously qualify for four times as many scholarships as men. And yet it's men who don't want competition. When feminists have rigged the game in women's favor and refused to unrig it, even after women have surpassed men in terms of winning, it's fucking men who are scared of competition? If women have tons of institutional assistance and encouragement that men don't, and they're refusing to give it up now that they're outperforming men, which is the sex that doesn't want the competition, Anna. Like, they just don't. Like, they're worried about the competition, which mm -hmm. is hilarious to me, right? Like, when you get into these discussions about equal pay... Which women essentially have, by law and by statistical analysis. Um, and look, I feel like I'm really fair when it comes to the issue of equal pay. I'm very clear about the government statistics that come out about how women make... I think it's 78 uh, cents on the dollar. Or 79 something. cents. 79 cents on the dollar. Uh, that's a skewed stat. Definitely, right? But I still feel like there is a pay gap if you compare men and women doing the exact same job, right? Oh, 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 you feel like there is feels, feels in your, in your feeling place. Call me when your feels are published in a peer-reviewed journal. Mm -hmm. So you bring up that issue and guys, some guys get so heated about it. I wonder why. And Anna, contrary to what you're saying, it's not just guys getting heated about it. And it just shows your insecurity. You're worried about that competition. Really? I'm worried about the competition when I bring up how the pay gap is a garbage statistic? How, how about when Christina Hoff Summers does? How about when Alison Tiemann does? Or Hannah Wallen? Or Anna Cherry? Or Janet Bloomfield? Or Kathy Young? Or Ash Scow? Or Catherine Kitchens? Or Catherine Hakeem? How about them? Are they just worried about the fucking competition, Anna? Are we scared of the competition or are we just calling out liars who claim women earn 79 cents for the exact same work a man earns a dollar for? Or are we just calling out idiots who claim that even though that stat isn't maybe accurate 100%, they feel in their feeling place like there has to be a pay gap because, you know, feels. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. You're doing the same job. You're in the same workplace. You deserve to make the same amount of money. Yes, you do. If you're doing the same job in the same workplace and have the same level of competency, skill, productivity, and experience, and you do, you do earn equal amounts of money. You do earn the same. Fuck's sake. I think a couple of things happen. Now we've gotten pretty deep into this, but... Yeah. Uh, number one, uh, it's uh, kind of like the Black Lives La Black Lives Matter movement, mm -hmm. where some whites in the country feel like, "Well, my life matters too." But I, we know, dude, they didn't say your life doesn't matter. They're saying our lives have historically not mattered to the cops. Can you please stop shooting us? Right? Yeah. Oh, is there an open institutional policy on the part of the police that dictates blacks should be more often shot than whites? You know, because there are institutional policies openly and specifically favoring women in areas where they're already ahead of men, like education. You know, like all those scholarships that men, women qualify that men don't. You know, that, that's, yeah, no, that, that's an institutional thing. You know, that's, eh. but yeah, no, Black Lives Matter. And they think the white, you say white privilege, and they're like, I don't have any privilege. Dude, I know you got it tough too. I know that. But like, on top of the toughness you got, they got that too. And plus, uh, sometimes cops beat on them for being black. Cops are much more likely to beat on someone for being male than for being black. Black. If you're black and male, the majority of the unequal treatment is due to the fact that you're male. There's no such thing as driving while black and female, Chank. It's not driving while black, it's driving while black and male. Stop and frisk policies 
do disproportionately target minorities, but 98% or more of or more of such stops are targeted on men. Full stop. The gender gap in application of criminal justice policies is six times wider than the race gap. What would help a given black man more? Eliminating the larger gender gap or the smaller race gap? Or do you even care? Right, but you don't know that because you're not black, right? Yeah. We're just trying to get you to pay attention to that. But they they take it personally like that, like as if you're telling them uh, that they're a CEO in this case, right? Mm -hmm. When you say women get paid less for the same job, sometimes or oftentimes they feel like you're saying, "Oh, you're rich." No, I'm not saying you're rich. Nobody's arguing that you're saying they're rich, Cenk. We're saying you're lying or mistaken. At most, the gender gap in pay is between two and seven percent, and that does not include. Sex differences in negotiating salary, nor does it include the impact working overtime or being flexible rather than demanding flexibility has on pay raises because those criteria are impossible to quantify. No one would argue that being willing to work overtime or travel or work on site or in camp or do shift work will get you more pay than someone who's, who insists on Monday to Friday, 9 to 5 in the office. No one will argue that the former guy is going to get paid more than the latter guy. You might have the same job description, even work the same number of hours performing the exact same tasks, Chank. But if you're doing that between midnight and 8 a.m., including Saturday and Sunday, and your coworker is doing it from 9 to 5 on weekdays, you're going to get different pay, Chank, and rightly so. Why would men take umbrage at this stupid pay gap myth? Because men are much more likely to work graveyards and weekends than women are, and graveyards and weekends should be compensated at a higher rate, even if the work is the exact same, because they're fucking horrible, Chank. Graveyards suck. If they didn't suck, more women would be willing to work them. Right, I'm saying that women in some categories have it even tougher than you do. Is there anyone who's actually arguing that women don't have it tougher than men in some circumstances or situations? You know, we have an entire mainstream media dedicated to pointing out every single area in which women might possibly have it tougher, all the way down to sexist air conditioning, right? Then you call us the whiners for, you know, because men kind of want to see their kids and shit. Who the fuck is arguing that women don't have problems? Yeah. It's okay. The other thing is that that protection of what you have, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of whites uh, hated affirmative action. Everybody, including women and blacks, should hate affirmative action. All it does is make you look like you didn't earn your position. For and and not be, just because they were racist, mm -hmm. but because they thought I'm a firefighter or I'm a carpenter or I'm whatever I am, and I want to pass my job onto my son like we've done for generations. <laughs> okay. And now they come in here and tell me my son can't just automatically get it. Your son couldn't just automatically get it unless it was a proprietorship, like a family business, which you could pass on to your children. Most parents want better for their children than what they had in terms of education, and that applies equally to daughters and sons, even in places like Iran, where... I bet you don't know, 60% of university students are women. Mm -hmm. That uh, now I gotta give a shot to a black kid, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I want my son to have the job. Or my daughter, just saying. Right? It's a natural instinct in some way, but it does get ugly. Lots of things get ugly, Chink. Yes, right? it does. So you gotta fight that natural instinct so that you know we can get to a better place. Karen, Karen, yada, yada, yada. 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 And go make me a ham sandwich.